together. So, so when I came here, I really felt the love because I volunteered my time at another place down the street serving the homeless. And uh, at the same time, I'm really homeless because I'm out of my place. So you know when you're out your comfort zone, you got to do what you need to be doing or you're going to go back in that same old pattern. So when I came here, I felt the love that they have and got my driver's license. Uh, I didn't have a job, but I thought, well, God going to provide for me, so I shouldn't even just worry about that. So I walked 25 blocks this way to go volunteer early in the morning, 25 blocks back. But people asking me, why are you doing that instead of catching the bus? I said, because I'm free now, and I feel like I'm really free, so I can talk to the Lord at the same time and get an understanding that this freedom don't come free. It's uh, something about taking care of your responsibilities to others and giving back to the community. And uh, me and my Christian brothers every Sunday, the third Sunday on Bible study, mm -hmm. and then we have Bible study like Tuesdays, and then we got Wednesdays now too. Okay. You know, well, we got Wednesdays and Tuesdays, and it's a good thing, you know. Mm -hmm. to keep a brother head straight and positive. And this is not just a stepping stone. This is a place to build your foundation around you that you got a purpose in life to take care of your business to be a productive citizen. So now I can be out here barbecuing yeah, instead yeah. of being in there with somebody that ain't, ain't gonna let me barbecue right. and not having nothing but a goal to get out to do this. And I have a job because I got a job like, I say two months later, and it was all like a plan. God already had it written. I'm an ex-dope addict, you know. I started off, you know, I graduated before most people did. Uh, when they said, I used to shoot them, you know, and then I started smoking them. But when I'm thinking about things of the past, I remember when I got locked up in 87, you know, and uh, I was in the jail, then advanced on to the penitentiary, mm -hmm. and I would lay down and, you know, go to sleep, and it was still like I was blowing smoke, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I can be engaged in the conversation on the wreck yard and somebody talking about shooting dope and I immediately had to go to the restroom. You know, I got, you know, my stomach got cool. I know we got brothers not so long ago got out of prison, you know, and it took me a while to shake these dogs, you know, my things in my past. Some of us might have come up in a house, oh, we wasn't no father. Boyfriend was abusive to the mother. We might have watched the father beat the mother, you know, and we still hold on to those things, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this because if you keep holding on to your past, man, you'll never be able to walk in your future. That's right. You know. I was raised up uh, South Oak Cliff, East San Antonio, Third Ward, Southwest Houston. And I left Southwest Houston, so I was raised up in some of the you know, tougher parts of Texas in a sense. And since I can remember, I always remember people getting out of prison. So that prison mentality is instilled in us before we actually go to prison. These are people that, that, that's living, you know, in, in, in the South Oak Cliffs and the Third Wards, South Parks, Acres Homes, you know, in these areas, you know, throughout Texas. You know, you got a man that's getting out of prison, he's telling you about peanut butter and pancakes. He's telling you about the programs. He's telling you about the fighting styles on different prisons. You know, if you go to this prison, you know, you got this type of fighting style. He's telling you about what goes on in prison. So when you get there, your mind is already prepared for that. Because people on the street, that's what we do. You know, we talk about the, and this is 93. I started selling drugs in 91 when I was 14. So from that point on, I was ready to go to prison. At 15, I knew that I was going to prison. I don't think um, I'm the type of person that I'm, I was finished with the streets. Uh, I did 17 years, so I was finished with the streets. I mean, it went out of me after about that 12 year. I was like, well, there is no way I can do this again. Uh, of course, before that, it was all because I was so young. It was I was like, you know, I got one more shot in me. Um, but common sense wise, there's no way that I would have went back to prison. Uh, but without the faith, I don't think that I would have been able to handle the success that I've had while in prison and since being out of prison if I hadn't had Jesus. Because, I mean, I'm able to see what the normal person is not coming through my situation. Uh, I mean, raised in the streets, uh, raised in prison. 
So a lot of people expect you to be crazy. A lot of people expect you just to have a, an attitude of uh, I could care less about myself or anybody else. Well, without Jesus, that's what that's what I would have been. But with Jesus, I mean, I see the bigger picture. I see that there is an eternity, and I strive for that eternity. But I also strive to tell others about that eternity uh, by living. People like me, uh, you can't just tell us anything because we can talk too. So with people like me that have Jesus, I can talk to those people. We can talk to one another because we understand. So Jesus gave me the ability to say, okay, see that brother right there, see that sister right there? Talk to them about you, who you are in me. Talk to them about who they can be in me. So that's why without Jesus, I wouldn't have had a testimony. What would I be without my faith? I would be probably dead. Because I know what I was doing, the devil had a plan for me, to put me right in the ground. And you know, without a faith, there ain't no works at all, brother. The yeah. only works he has is death. Mm. And then, you know, he tricked me. I was a dummy for the longest. And I, I ain't, you know, I'm not with being a dummy. I'm way better than that because the Lord showed me the works that he had for me in store. You know, I, I didn't even know I could beat people in a chess tournament or anything like that, you know, or know something about chess. I just didn't know it. I didn't know I could talk to young people on their level of language and not using cuss language, but using a level of language where they would understand, do I want to be this crash dummy that he's talking about, or do I want to be the person of God like he is right now, trying to do the right thing, you know, and they can relate to that, you know, because you're not coming to them just throwing a book at them, but you're coming to them explaining that, you know, if you're doing this, the devil got you already. You don't have to be on his team, you've been on his team, you know? And that's why well, I'm glad I changed my ways. You know, while you're incarcerated sometimes, or back then, you were looked at as weak, carrying the Bible around and saying, oh, y'all using that crutch, you know, this is that and the other. But I tell you one thing, becoming a Christian behind the walls, you can immediately start experiencing persecution. One thing which we don't do out here, that's all, hallelujah, okay, that's good, man, you accepted Christ. But behind the walls, now you have actually uh, aligned yourself with another quote-unquote organization that a lot of people don't agree with, and you are in close proximity with these people. So you really, you really have to, to, to answer the question, am I going to really stand? Or am I going to play with this thing? Playing with it doesn't work. It doesn't last. And Christ completely not only filled my life, but he consumed my life. Absolutely nothing else mattered to me. Nothing else. I was, I was coming up on my time of release. And I did know that they were going to provide me a way back to Texas. And I had no idea where I was going to go. I had no money. I had absolutely nothing. And I didn't mind. My auntie here in Houston, she agreed somewhat reluctantly to open up the door for me so I at least have somewhere to, to lay my head until they could find me somewhere else to stay, a halfway house or something like this. But uh, when I walked out of those doors, it was just like, Lord, I don't know where I'm, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going on. I know you know, and I know you got my best interests at heart, and you're not obligated to tell me nothing, but I do pray that you help me obey you in any way that you, any way that you say. In my life, I have no life anymore. It's your life. You're not supposed to forget it. You're not supposed to forget it because, because your past has made you who you are today. So you take that as a positive, even the negative. You take the negative as a positive. Cause you don't want to revisit that. Yeah, but so, yeah, so right. you don't want to forget it. Yeah. If you want to learn, you can learn from this. That's what this is called: uh, <clears throat> sacrifice, conviction, and hope. Because you want to sacrifice in order to get to that hope. Sacrifice, conviction, and you're gonna get convicted and hope. So you don't want to forget about your past. You got to always keep that in mind. You just don't want to relive the past and make, make the same old mistakes that you did back then, make the wrong decisions that you did then. Well, I, could, I know the thing that would hold me back. My past would hold me back. 
if I be stupid enough to stay stuck on it, sit back and dwell on that path of what I used to be, I can't go back. What I used to be, that's, that's ancient history. It's about who I am right now. I don't care about who I was yesterday. Who am I today? That's the cold key issue. Can I forget that? Can I, am I strong enough to walk away from that? Let that go? Even though I see, sometimes I see it surrounding me, or I go down the road somewhere, I'm saying, okay, now I used to smoke crack, I used to like to say I'm crack. I'm in a crack infested neighborhood. And nobody in Houston just can say that they seen me smoke crack or buy no crack or buy sell no crack. It's called, I'm strong enough to stay away, because I know what it's going to do to me. And I'm not here to destroy myself. I've been free too long, and I love it, and I will not give it up for nobody. I ain't give it up. I can't see that. So, therefore, I ain't going to stay good back into that path. I don't want to talk about that path. I don't want to focus on that path. It's because if I do, it's going to distract me, and I'm not going to be able to continue to go forward like I'm going right now. And I don't need no distraction, and I'm strong enough to avoid distraction. Well, it's, it's making me do something I've never done in life, is take everything and use it in the right perspective to save my money and be responsible wow. as a citizen in this city or any city that I visit, wherever. And you know, I asked the Lord to guide my footsteps, in which he did. He put me on a monitor, and that's what he's doing, okay. helping me guide my footsteps. I have priority, you know, I know just good-to-go-lucky guy, you know. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, a lot of times it's situational, uh, but I'm, of course I'm always say, you know, I went to prison when I was 16. Uh, and then depending on what they're going through, you know, if I have something to relate to that, I'll tell them about that. Or I may know somebody else's testimony and I can relate to that. But you always can go to the Word. You always can go to some story in the Old Testament or some relevant scripture, you know, about salvation in the New Testament. So it's really situational. Uh, but for instance, one time at the workforce, this, uh, this, this lady was crying, um, and I tried to reach out to her. I'm not the best witness, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant about approaching people sometimes. But I mean, she was crying, so I said, okay, let me talk to her. And the whole situation was kind of funny because we had a, a young girl who was going to uh, law school. I mean, uh, she was going to be a police officer or something. Um, and her mother worked there, so she just was coming to after school. This lady was crying, I mean, on and on, so I was able to talk to her when I finally was able to get it opened up. She told her story, and then I just started telling my story as well. And even though her situation was serious, she looked at mine, and I had probably been out, you know, four months, you know, trying to get a job. Never had a job in my whole life. And I was telling her about, you know, my situation, uh, and she started consoling me. You know, but then we started consoling each other. Then it came to the point where the, the, the little girl, she asked me, you know, what I was in prison for. And then we sat up and talked about that. So a lady that's going through something, uh, a young girl that aspires to be, you know, in law enforcement and me, you know, it kind of was uh, a funny situation. So it really depends, you know, it really depends on the situation.